Welcome back to Scooter Gang guys. Today we are doing the tire change on the Eohora Tiger King. This is an 11 inch tubeless tire but it's also a split rim. It's a pretty special tire change so I wanted to make a video of it just because there's not any videos really online of this. I did run into a small issue at the end but I solved it. If you have this scooter you'll want to watch all the way through before you start doing the tire change so you see what I'm talking about and you're able to order everything you need. But the beginning here is pretty self-explanatory so I'm not really going to talk much until we get to where it gets a little bit complicated. If you'd like to skip ahead to about the minute 45 second mark, jump to where we start talking about what's special about this tire change. see 12 split rim bolts which usually there's only six if you're familiar with these type of split rim scooters when you take all 12 out it's gonna both separate the motor from the rim and separate the two pieces of the rim you'll see while I'm taking this apart this small gasket piece starts falling out and we are going to talk about that later it is the small issue that I'm talking about you are going to need tire levers just to get the old tire off because it's pretty stuck on there but you're not levering it over the edge of the rim or anything and you're just sort of using it to get it pried off. Here's that gasket piece I was talking about. do the same thing for the other side and pry it off it doesn't take a lot of muscle just go around the whole edge and it'll come off Now you see our two specialized split rim motor pieces and what makes this special is there's these two gaskets in between here. Each of these gaskets is obviously meant to hold the air from going between the split rim but there's a small issue with the inner gasket where it's not quite big enough and I messed with it for quite a while trying to get it perfectly back in that little lip and was unable to do it so I kind of just put the rim back together with it. 80-90% in that lip. There was maybe one or two little sections sort of hanging over but I thought maybe it would still work. Let's see if it works. Just to see for your guys sake if this is gonna be an issue you know what I mean. So I reassembled the scooter and I'm gonna pause right here just for a second and point out a couple things. So it comes with 12 bolts. There's gonna be six shorter ones and six longer ones. And you're gonna have to sort of pay attention because only some of these slots are threaded at this point we're looking at and they're alternating. So you're gonna have to find the threaded slots and clamp those down first. The ones without threads are for the motor. When the motor goes on, it has threads itself on there. So you're gonna use the threads on the motor with the longer screws and you'll sort of understand Understand what I'm talking about when you get this taken apart and look at it it's a little bit hard to explain it even with the video and everything but it'll make sense when you're looking at it in person for sure once you get everything lined back up you're gonna want to close it back together with first the six shorter bolts and then the 12 longer bolts
this point, pretty standard procedure for a tire like this that's maybe a little bit too thin for this rim is you're gonna wanna use a ratchet strap to sort of close the gaps around the bead. On a lot of tires, depending what tire you're putting on, you'll be able to just blow the tire up right now and it'll work. However, on this tire I'm using, there's a bit of a big gap between the bead and so we're gonna use this automotive grade bead sealant to close the gap and seal it. This stuff I found while watching a guy do a semi truck tire change and he swears by it. It's stuff that literally, it works on cars. It's been around for a hundred years, this product, and it works really well. I've used it on probably a hundred different scooter tires at this point. If you don't use this, you're gonna end up getting low pressure at some point and the tire will deep bead a lot easier versus if you use this, it's sort of, is like an extra layer of rubber and glue that just sort of seals everything up really nicely. So it's worth your time to do this. And in a lot of tires, you're gonna have to do this to even get it to seat the bead. Now you're gonna see I'm gonna try and put the air in and fail multiple times. This is probably gonna happen to you depending on what tire you have. It takes a bit of messing around with. You might have to take the valve stem core out of the valve stem in order to force even more air in at once. You're gonna need probably 70 to 100 PSI minimum pump. Use the air compressor. And what you're trying to do is force the edge of the bead right onto the rim on both sides, right? So it takes a bit of pressure, but you'll see it pop out once you finally get it set on there, right? It'll be obvious. And then you take your ratchet strap, pop that off, and the tire will be sitting.
However, like I said, originally that gasket we put in was kind of a little messed up. So it obviously leaked out by the next day and I had a flat tire. Once again, I took it apart, went down to my local Ace Hardware and looked around at gasket makers. It's this sort of silicone sealant they use in a lot of different industries. You can make a custom gasket that will theoretically be better than that stock one anyways. So I went with that option and we bought this. This is 90 minute gasket maker called The Right Stuff. I'll post a link if I can find it on Amazon. This stuff did the trick perfectly and now my tire is holding air great. You put a thin bead all around the edge and then letting it dry. And the best way to do this after I did it a couple times, obviously. Get everything lined up, screw in the short screws first, then go back, put your motor on, get all the long screws in, get all of it like 90% tight, and then you wait 90 minutes for this stuff to set up, and it creates a sort of firm gasket, and then you go back and retighten all 12 of the bolts 100%. That's sort of how they say on the bottle to use it. That's sort of what I did, and it worked. Make sure you put enough gasket maker. It's gonna come out as you see through the screw holes, and that's fine because it's gonna create a seal even in the screw hole. It's gonna seal the screw hole itself and the screw. So it's actually superior, I think, than stock in almost every way when you do this. It might cost you a few bucks to buy the bottle or whatever, but you're gonna end up with a better gasket than you started with, in my opinion. But luckily for you guys, I figured all this out beforehand and you're not gonna have to deal with wasting time because you know beforehand just to make your own gasket really quick, super easy. Anyways, really liking this scooter so far, I'm gonna ride it a few hundred miles here make the review probably next couple weeks here but definitely a scooter to me that was worth putting these pmt tires on if you guys aren't familiar with these yet they're from wired rides the rainy season all that you know what i mean with really really good traction